Hello everyone, and for the first time in five months, I am back with a blast from the past. Now, if you guys have been well aware, I started this series called Blast from the Past, where I will look at some of the old pay-per-views from the past. Now, I could look at maybe like an old Raw, maybe like a famous segment. Like, if there's like a segment that you guys remember so greatly on an episode of Raw or SmackDown, you can, you know, maybe let me know about that and I'll maybe bring that to your attention as well. If there's anything, you know, any mem anything back then that you thought was really iconic to you. So, uh, today we're going to be diving in to Royal Rumble 2016. Because we're on the road to the Royal Rumble, I thought why not we look at the 2016 Royal Rumble and I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions on that year's Royal Rumble event. How, what did I think of the show? What did I think of any of the build leading up to certain pay-per-views? And stuff like that. So. So let's begin. We had a pre-show match. And the it was a fatal four-way tag team match. That the winner would qualify into the Royal Rumble. Which I don't understand that. Because everyone declares. You know their name anyway. Everyone declares their name. So what's the point in you know doing that. So, so anyway, but so, so anyway, we had Jack Swagger and Mark Henry versus The Ascension versus Damian Sandow and Darren Young. Jeez, that's a random tag team. And the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray and Devon, and the eventual winners were Jack Swagger and Mark Henry. Who care? Who cares? Right? Free show. Who cares? So, Jack Swagger and Mark Henry are in the Royal Rumble. Whoop de doo. So then we had the first match of the show. It was Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens in a last man standing match. This was for the Intercontinental Championship, by the way. This was a really good match. I actually remember this match. This match was very good. There was a lot of crazy spots. I really did enjoy that. And because I started my reviews, kind of around about the close to the end of 2016... There are definitely get, there are some pay-per-views that I I never reviewed in 2016. So 2016 is kind of the year where I kind of was like getting ready to start my you know my YouTube career. The end of 2016, basically TLC and onwards was basically like the beginning the beginning career of my channel when it came to doing reviews. So I thought I'd bring that to your attention. So, I guess reviewing this pay-per-view is is a, is a pretty good solid start considering that 2016 was the year I started my uh, my my reviewing my reviews on my channel. So, so yeah, Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens, this was a great last man standing match. I really did enjoy this. I thought this was great. I thought this was fun. Dean Ambrose got the victory in the end. He beat Kevin Owens in the last man standing match. Great stuff. Great stuff. I really did enjoy it. I thought that was... I thought that was uh, really great stuff from Ambrose and Owens. Then the next match we had was for the tag team titles. It was the New Day defending them, Big E in, in Kofi Kingston, defending them against uh, the Usos. And this was when the New Day were heels. New Day were heels in this. So this is actually pretty interesting. This was back when the New Day were not really well liked by the fans because they were heels at the start. And the, and the Usos were... They, I think I think that was I think this was when they were still doing the Maka more the Maka more the Maka more thing when they were still doing the whole Haka thing 
the whole Samoan, the Haka thing. This is when the Uso still had that kind of gimmick. They were wearing like the face paint. So I do. So I think that I, I do remember that. Like that was when the Uso still wore the face paint and everything. Wasn't really a big fan of those Uso. I wasn't really a big fan of that Uso when uh, they were had the face paint and everything. They were still a great team, but you know. It was still a great team, but, um... So, yeah, this was, uh, pretty, uh... So, yeah, that was pretty cool. And this tag team match was, you know, not too bad. Not too bad. It was a pretty decent tag match, and the New Day would win. So, that was... So, yeah, there you go. New... So New Day would win, they would retain their titles. Then we had Kalisto taking on Alberto de Rio for the United States Championship. Jeez, this really does bring back memories. This was the only year that Kalisto was ever given a fair push. Kalisto now is just a bum. Kalisto now, he's just a, he's just a bum now. Back then, he was actually pretty good. Kalisto, I don't mind him as an in-ring performer. He's actually pretty good, but he's a bum. He's a bum. And looking back now, seeing that he wins the United States Championship in this match against Alberto Del Rio, and Alberto Del Rio, you know, you know, there's nothing good we can really say about Alberto Del Rio because of how he is in his personal life, how he is in... So that so you got that. So yeah, you had this whole situation between Kalisto and Alberto Del Rio. I don't really remember much of this. So yeah, this match I literally had zero memory of. And Kalisto won the title. I can't remember if this was his first reign or his second run. I know he, I know he had two runs with the title. Was this his second run? I can't remember. I, I can't remember. It just shows you how much I barely remember uh, Kalisto and his run as the United States champion. And then we move on to the Divas title match. This was Charlotte defending her title against Becky Lynch. Back when Becky Lynch was the Irish last kicker. And uh, Charlotte would win this match. She would beat uh, Becky Lynch. This is when Becky Lynch was the Irish last kicker. I prefer this Becky Lynch over the man. Sorry, don't point a gun in my face. If you don't point a gun at me, I prefer the Irish last kicker over the man. The man is a heel persona. The man is a heel persona. So, yeah, I prefer the Irish last kicker over the man. Don't point a gun at me, it's just my opinion. So anyway, this was when Sasha Banks made her return. I can't remember what happened to her. I don't know if she was injured or if she was just gone off television, but this was when Sasha made her return, and she put the bank statement on Charlotte de declaring her name as, as the next contender for the Divas Championship. This is when Char this is when Sasha started transitioning into a babyface. This is when they started to transition Sasha into a babyface. Um, Sasha was a bit of a heel for a little while on the main roster in Team Bad. 
But this is when she was starting to break out of Team Bad and they transitioned her into the way baby face. So that's so that's so that was the whole Sasha Banks situation leading to that big WrestleMania match. Did I ever did I review WrestleMania 32? No, I no I didn't. That was WrestleMania 33 was the first one I reviewed. I might I, I might revisit that. I might revisit WrestleMania 32, which that was classified as one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. So, other than the Divas champ, other than the Divas Championship match that happened on that very night. But anyway, next we have the Men's Royal Rumble. This one was actually for the WWE championship now this is where the wwe championship was put on the line vince mcmahon orchestrated vince mcmahon orchestrated this this royal rumble to wait as a way to get the wwe championship off of roman reigns this is when roman reigns was wwe champion he was shoved down our throats he was the big baby face that vince mcmahon was trying to push for years and years and years, but um, that never. But you know, no one, no one took Roman as a as a likable babyface. So, so Vince McMahon made Roman Reigns the number one entrant in this Royal Rumble. He forced him to come out at the number one spot. Roman Reigns had to start, and the second man that entered the Royal Rumble was Rusev. Rusev started at number two Roman would quickly dispatch him and take him out in a minute and 30 seconds yes I'm actually reading this off of Wikipedia so then so that way I know how long each wrestler lasts and this was the very pay-per-view we had the debut of the phenomenal AJ Styles this was this was the this was his debut. This was when we saw AJ Styles for the very first time in WWE. This was a really good moment. Seeing AJ Styles was really really cool. I will definitely say that it was really cool to see him appear here. There's really nothing I can say there. It was a really cool elimination. It was really cool to have AJ Styles appear. And I really did enjoy that. So yeah, this was when this was when Styles made his phenomenal debut. Then at number four we had Tyler Breeze. He didn't last long. He got eliminated pretty quickly. I believe this is Tyler Breeze's only Royal Rumble. If you don't count the greatest Royal Rumble. Should we really count the greatest Royal Rumble? If you don't count the greatest Royal Rumble, I think this was Tyler Breeze's only Royal Rumble. And then at number five, we had Curtis Axel. And Curtis Axel, again, was eliminated pretty quickly in a minute and 30 seconds. Tyler Breeze lasted a minute and 18 seconds. So that was the end So that was the end of Curtis Axel. And then number six was Chris Jericho. Number seven was Kane. We didn't have an elimination for a while. We didn't have any eliminations for a while here. And we had then Gold Dust came out next. At number eight, Goldust came out next at number eight. Ryback came out at number nine. Kofi Kingston at number ten, and then we had Titus O'Neil coming out at number eleven. Titus O'Neil was the next one to cause an elimination. He got he got uh, Goldust out of the out of the ring. He got Goldust eliminated. At 6 minutes and 18 seconds. That's how long he lasted. And then. And then. And then our truth came to the ring. He was eliminated by Kane. Because he thought it was the Money in the Bank Royal Rumble. Money in the Bank match. You know our truth still playing the stupid character that he has today. Luke Harper came in next. At number 13. Stardust. At number 14. And by the way. By the time Stardust came to the ring, this is when Vince McMahon 
had the League of Nations, the stable of Seamus, Rusev, and Alberto Del Rio. I'm pretty sure Wade Barrett was in the stable. I know Wade Barrett was a part of this stable, and for some reason Wade Barrett wasn't there. For some reason Wade Barrett wasn't there. I know he was a part of the stable, but he wasn't there. It was only Del Rio, Rusev, and Sheamus causing the beatdown on Roman Reigns. They ended up beating the crap out of Roman Reigns. So Roman was uh, taken out. So... So we had so we had Stardust come to the ring. And then we had the Big Show, Big Show. Uh, Chris, I'm sorry, Kofi Kingston got eliminated by Chris Jericho. You couldn't, you didn't see that. No one saw this happen because um, the whole thing with the League of Nations. Titus O'Neil would then get eliminated by the Big Show, and the Big Show ended. You know, I'm not going to bother going over them all because it's just going to get all over the place. Uh, then we had Neville coming out next at number 16. Braun Strowman entered next. Then Kevin Owens. Then Dean Ambrose came out. At, no, Kevin Owens came out at 18. Dean Ambrose came out at 19. And that's when we had Sami Zayn come out at number 20. Sami Zayn came out at number 20. This was when Sami Zayn was a babyface. Eric Rowan came out at 21. Mark Henry came out at 22. And this was when uh, the Wyatt family were just eliminating everybody. And then out came Brock Lesnar. And out, then out came Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar just destroys the Wyatt family. He just takes them out. It, like For some reason, they were going into a feud... Uh, it seems like they were a aiming with a feud with Brock Lesnar and Bray Wyatt, but they never did it for some reason. I don't know why, but they... I don't know why, but they were starting this angle with the Wyatts and uh, Brock Lesnar back then. But I don't understand why they didn't execute it. But, uh, yeah, Brock Lesnar just man just destroys everybody at this point. Jack, Sw Jack Swagger comes to the ring. Brock Lesnar takes him out in 15 seconds. The Miz, uh, he came out. He stood outside. Miz stood stood outside when he came out. He stood outside when he came out. He just, you know, didn't give two shits. He just, you know, stood outside for a while. But then he came in. Then eventually he would come in when Brock Lesnar was gone. He didn't want to get in the ring when the when the Wyatts and Brock were in there. And then when they were all gone, that's when the Miz came in. Alberto Del Rio came out next at uh, 26. Bray Wyatt came out at 27. And this was when the Wyatt family came back and took out Brock Lesnar. And then, Dolph Z and then Dolph Ziggler came out at 28. Boy, I miss Dolph Ziggler as a babyface. You know, Dolph Ziggler was, was so good as a babyface. He was such a great babyface. I really miss babyface Dolph Ziggler. Then Sheamus came out at 29, and this is when Roman Reigns returned. Yeah, Roman Reigns was gone from number 14 through 29. It was pretty much gone for, like, pretty much ma majority of the match. So, yeah, Roman was pretty much gone for the majority of the match, which I didn't really like. I, don't, I didn't really like it all that much because I thought it was kind of silly. Oh, yeah. Kevin Owens eliminated AJ Styles. He eventually eliminated him. Sami Zayn got his revenge on Kevin Owens as well. Like I said, I wasn't going to go through all the eliminations. If you've seen the 2016 Royal Rumble, you know who gets eliminated by who. And then at number 30 came out Triple H, the man that ended up winning the whole thing. Roman Reigns was the third last man eliminated. And it came down to him and Dean Ambrose. Him and Dean Ambrose were the last two guys in the ring. 
And this is when Triple H won the WWE Championship. Now, what were my thoughts on Triple H winning the WWE Championship? I personally did not like this. I thought this was just... I wouldn't call this another attempt to get the Roman agenda over. I wouldn't go that far. But I will say this Royal Rumble was had a lot of potential. If you wanted a new WWE Champion, if you wanted to have the fans shocked and amazed when we get a new WWE Champion when Roman Reigns gets eliminated, I mean, look at the people you had in there. You had AJ Styles, Tyler Breeze, Rusev, Curtis Axel, Jericho, Kane, Goldust, Ryback, Kofi, Titus, Truth, Harper, Cody Rhodes, Stardust, Big Show, Neville, Braun, Kevin, Dean, Sammy, Rowan, Henry, Lesnar, Swagger, Miz, Del Rio, Bray, Ziggler, and Sheamus. Who the hell would you give the WWE Championship to out of all those people? Your logical answer would probably be, well, maybe Bray Wyatt. Maybe Bray Wyatt should have won this Royal Rumble. You know, maybe some people could say, well, maybe you could have gone with the Dark Horse. You know, you could have given it to Dolph Ziggler. You know, you could have had Dolph Ziggler win. Like a Dark Horse or something like that. I mean... So this is why this Royal Rumble, like the only highlight in this Royal Rumble was AJ Styles' debut. This Royal Rumble, it didn't have a lot of credible contenders that were going to win the WWE Championship. And this is why Triple H winning this Royal Rumble really kills the whole mood about this. Like imagine if they had AJ Styles last the entire thing and they had AJ Styles on his debut win the WWE Championship. Like that would have been insane. That would have been insane. That would have been way better than what Paige did when she won the Divas Championship on her debut. But the thing is, that is something that... That is something to me that I feel like that this Royal Rumble lacked. This Royal Rumble lacked contenders. It lacked the shock factor on who was going to win. If this Royal Rumble had more serious contenders for the championship back then, I feel like... If you didn't have Triple H in there, if you didn't put Triple H in the match, who was going to win the title? Chris Jericho? Brock Lesnar? Del Rio? Wyatt? Ziggler? Sheamus? Owens? There wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of true contenders back in 2016. There wasn't a lot of big contenders back then. So, this is why Triple H won the Rumble, because they didn't have a lot of contenders back then. And this is why I didn't like it, because I felt like they could have, you know, they could have gone with a shock factor. Like, even if, even if you gave the Rumble to someone who isn't WWE Championship material. Like, let's say you gave, say you gave bloody uh, Neville the Royal Rumble. You had Neville win. As a surprising, shocking factor. When, if you had Neville win. Like, yes, obviously he's not going to be WWE Champion for long. But it would be a bit of a surprise. And by the way, the WWE Championship back then was called the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So, I'm just saying. Like, this, there just wasn't a lot of, there just wasn't a lot of contenders. There just wasn't a lot of contenders. And I feel like this is what really hurt this Raw Rumble. Is it really the worst Royal Rumble? I wouldn't really call this the worst Royal Rumble. I feel like there were, you know, some, you know, good matches. Like, I think Charlotte and Becky had a good match. Ambrose and Owens, they had a fantastic match. New Day Usos, they had a pretty fun tag team match. The only weak match I consider was Kalisto and Del Rio. Like, match quality-wise, this pay-per-view was pretty good. So... But the Royal Rumble, I felt like Triple H should not have won it. I feel like they really should have given it to somebody else. But, just with all these names you had in there, it just didn't seem, you know, really make any sense on who you could have had won other than Triple H. So anyway, guys, that is the end of my thoughts 
on the 2016 Royal Rumble. I've got another blast in the past video coming up very soon. I've already got, I've got this one planned out already. I had this one planned out before this one. And I thought I'd post this one first because obviously it's Royal Rumble season. So the next time, so the next blast in the past video that you're going to be getting from me is going to be the Survivor Series from 2014. So yeah, so be so be on the lookout for that, and I will see you all next time.